table if that's yeah. okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Amazing, thank you. So we're off, we're off the clock for a minute. Yes. Tell, speak to the um, key issue, whatever you need to say to get you in the groove for doing this. First tell me who I am and who Absolutely. you are. Um, you are a member of the board of DoubleClick. Um, you're, so DoubleClick's board of directors, you're a third party ad advertising agency that's actually owned by Google. Um, so you're a subsidiary of Google. And we are Custom U Consulting and so we're going to be discussing um, some ethical issues in regard to your business model um, involving privacy and anonymity on the web. I think I think I think so. Okay. Sorry, yes, thank you. I'm oriented. Thank you. And this is already going. Thank you so oh, much. Oh gosh. <laughs> so I could have been very secret and switched on you while you were coming. <laughs> In the bedroom. Oh gosh, this is actually Ours is too. Yeah. Um, hang on. How did that just begin? Okay. Just I know. Know. Ours began as well. <laughs> you said? Yep. DoubleClick Board of Directors, good morning. Speaking on behalf of myself and my colleagues at Custom U Consulting, we thank you for inviting us back again today to discuss some of the ethical issues that surround your current business model. Now, as a third-party ad agency that's owned by Google, DoubleClick tracks and collects online data and then uses that data in order to proliferate um, uh, target advertising. So target advertising tracks users across the web and then in turn will generate advertisements that are based on your specific interests. Now this information is collected by cookies and so cookies are just um, little pieces of text that are linked to your browser and then all of that information will gather what you've done on the web, where you've been on the web and then in turn it will give you some very specific ad advertisements that cater to your desires and your interests. Now, as uh, this process is an incredible source of revenue, not just for you as a third party ad agency, but also for your customers, who are the individual companies selling the goods and services. At this current moment, this, this practice is entirely legal. Now, the FTC has guidelines uh, for this particular technology. However, the penalties for disregarding these guidelines are relatively inconsequential. What we see happening sometimes is that there are some companies who decide to completely disregard these, these regulations and then they opt to pay the resulting fines after the fact. So the goal of target advertising is not to hurt anybody, it's not to spy on you, it's not to violate your privacy. These companies and corporations, including yours, you're looking for personal information in order to sell them to companies like Amazon and Target in order to have them send us as the users targeted advertising. It improves our shopping experience and it's an overall good thing. However, we believe that there's an ethical dilemma that lies in the extent to which companies and corporations should have access to internet users' activities and information without their consent or knowledge. Important to this, cons important to this case are the concepts of anonymity and privacy. Privacy is the con privacy is the ability of a person to keep their personal information, including their actions and beliefs, to themselves. Anonymity as opposed to privacy is the condition of being nameless or unidentifiable. That is to say, your actions and beliefs may or may not be public, but nobody knows who you are. You can think of it as President Obama has privacy, but not anonymity. We all know who he is, we all know where he goes, what he does, but when he goes home at night to the White House, he has his own private life. Now imagine that you step out to use the restroom and without your knowledge, someone has installed a hidden camera in the bathroom. Now that peeper doesn't have any idea who you are, your anonymity is completely preserved, but your privacy has most definitely been violated. Unfortunately, we can think of cookies the same way that we think of the peeper in the bathroom. Every time that you log on to the internet, think of it as having your webcam turned on all the time with these companies like Target and Amazon tracking you and collecting information on your name, your credit cards, your financial history, employment history, demographic history, search history, anything you can think of, there's probably a cookie attached to that which informs them of it. So why, why do you care? Anonymity and privacy matter because both are incredibly important to personal autonomy, and autonomy is a central value, if not the central value of our free society. Autonomy is the ability uh, of an individual or group to act uh, completely independently according to their own preferences, their moral values, free of manipulation, coercion, or any sort of exploitation. It's this personal autonomy that is the basis for the philosophical argument that all rational people are deserving of moral consideration. 
And it's this personal autonomy that gives us as citizens of the United States rights every day to worship, speak, and protest freely. Anonymity and privacy are necessary for autonomy because if a person is unidentifiable or her actions are confidential, she's more likely to feel freer to associate with whomever she wants, to read and watch whatever she chooses, and to express her opinions as she sees fit without fear of scrutiny. Since anonymity and privacy are so important to personal autonomy, we believe that anonymity and privacy are, absolute, are freedoms which absolutely require consent in order to forfeit. So currently, your consent to being tracked is just assumed every time you get onto the internet. Um, you're, you're, it's uh, called implied consent. However, we believe that real respect for personal autonomy is, requires expressed consent, which is an oral agreement, or, I'm sorry, or written, which, where you agree to perform or to be the subject of an action. And this has to be completely informed, completely voluntary, and completely free of coercion. So that is to say that the, the consent that we're looking for you to have is requires a yes, not simply the absence of a no. So the use of cookies will end up being completely fine and not the violation of privacy and anonymity if you as double click require consent before accessing this personal information. And that's what we suggest that you do. Educate your users on cookies, what they do, and what they are. Inform your users of exactly what personal information you will be collecting, to whom it's going to, and exactly what it will be used for. And request their consent before accessing this personal information again, and respect their decisions no matter what they may be. Now I'd love to build on Caroline's ethical argument. Why do you as double click care? Why is this important to you? Especially since you've been profitable by neglecting this, this ethical argument in, thus far. Now the reason that this is so important is just because DoubleClick's customers are the individual companies, such as Macy's or Target or Amazon. So why do you care about the individuals from whom you're collecting this information? Let me tell you why. These, these individuals are your stakeholders in two very important, in two very important ways. First, they're your customers' customers. So what these individuals think about your direct customers is going to influence your company right now and your company in the future. Furthermore, these customer or these um, individuals, excuse me, are essentially your suppliers because you are you are collecting and selling their personal information and data. Essentially, your company would not be able to operate without these individuals. So, as such, we must understand that these are very important stakeholders, and we must keep their their primary interests in in mind. Now, as Caroline outlined. Their, the primary interests include privacy and anonymity in order to respect their personal autonomy. Now, how do we protect these interests? By obtaining the user's informed and expressed consent every single time that they visit the web. How then can you obtain a person's informed and expressed consent? We have a proposition for you that would not only keep you at the top of the industry, but that would also ensure that the interests of these stakeholders are respected. We propose a browser add-on called Refresh that would consistently refresh cookies, except for those placed there by DoubleClick, or any cookies that are um, required for the website to function correctly. This plugin could be added to any browser and will allow the user the option of either turning off the cookies entirely or to add a content-specific stipulation as to how their information is to be collected and who it is to be shared with. This software addresses the ethical issues by asking for the expressed and informed consent of the user, thereby protecting their privacy and anonymity. As shown by a, recent publishly, a recently published paper, sorry, um, there is a correlation between transparency in business practices and stock price increase in the market. This and an increase in value due to goodwill are both benefits which DoubleClick could expect to gain from this venture. By implementing this business practice, DoubleClick minimizes the possibility of any litigation due to any laws which may pass in the future because this data collection is entirely consent-based. Now, DoubleClick, unfortunately, you have a history of privacy issues. You have genuinely paid millions of dollars in FTC sanctions as well as class action lawsuit settlements. Now, in addition to these financial setbacks, your public image has also taken quite a hit. I'm sorry, but this is not a business model that you ought to be proud of. Two days ago, the New York Times just published an article uh, describing the trouble that Comcast is having right now with their proposed takeover of Time Warner Cable. 
Now, according to analysts, Comcast's history of failing to comply with conditions of past mergers, plus a poor reputation, indicates how the company is going to act in the future. And so these analysts believe that the merger should not even be permitted whatsoever. So as you can see, your past behavior can and likely will come back and hinder DoubleClick's growth and progress in the future. But by extension, furthermore, your parent company's progress is going to be hindered. Your company, your Google's pro growth and progress will probably cease or at least lessen because of what you did and continue to do as DoubleClick. So based on yesterday's and today's presentation, we hope to drive home with you several points. One, that your users' privacy and anonymity, as well as your own when you use the internet, are invaluable for personal autonomy, and that educated, voluntary consent should be required for the acquisition, use, and distribution of personal data. That acting ethically definitely does not entail sacrificing profit, and that you have a unique opportunity today to completely revolutionize the industry standards, making you not only a financial leader, but also the ethical standard by which all other corporations will have to measure up to. We hope that what we've offered you today has inspired and excited you to take a bold step into the future of consumer respect and freedom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so kindly. Thank you. You're sure you're happy with what you're getting? Yeah, I think the lighting's better on this end anyway. So.